Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Travis Binky from Australian Rare Earths. How are you today? Yeah, I'm good. Thanks for having me today. I appreciate it. Australian Rare Earths, you have approximately a market cap of Australian 25 million, is that correct? That's right, yep. Okay, so you're new to our audience. Can you tell us more about Australian Rare Earths? Yeah, so Australian Rare Earths is um, advancing an ironic clay um, project in South Australia. A uh, discovery was made back in 2020. The company was IPO'd in 2021. And since then, we've um, drilled out a, a large resource of some 240 million tonnes uh, at, a, at a TREO of 750 ppm. Um, over that time, we've also uh, uncovered a reasonably contiguous higher grade subset of that resource of around 1,000 ppm, 70 odd million tonnes of that. Uh, so the resource is large, it only sits on uh, a relatively small part of our, of our tenure um, and so the style of mineralisation there is, is extensive. Uh, we're not going to be resource constrained and we'll be able to continue to grow the resource over time but we've got enough to start with. And so what our focus has been on over the last couple of years is looking at how we can best develop the project. So we're currently in a pre-feasibility study uh, which we will hope to um, publish early next year. Uh, and that's under a, a heap leach development pathway. So uh, we've, we've done a lot of metallurgical test work. Um, we've got a good understanding of the, of the project uh, and we think that the heap leach uh, approach in our context is going to certainly be the most economic uh, and sustainable way to, to develop the project. So we're really excited to, to uh, keep working, keep progressing and, and bring a project into development you know, over the next few years um, as, as we advance. Okay, so here's what I've heard. <laughs> I've heard we have an ionic clay yep. deposit in Australia. Uh, you're marching towards a pre-feasibility study. Yep. And something I found intriguing, which I know our audience will love, is the Australian government seems to love you. Can you tell us a little bit more about their support? Yeah, so in December last year, we were awarded a $5 million grant from the Australian government under the uh, International Partnerships in Critical Minerals Program. Uh, it's a co-funded uh, grant, so we'll also contribute $5 million for a $10 million spend over 2025 and 2026. Uh, the program of work will help us deliver some metallurgical test work, uh, the pre-feasibility study, we'll also build and operate a demonstration facility next year, uh, as well as advance our regulatory approval. So uh, that, that $5 million grant is, is certainly going to help continue to uh, make significant inroads in, in progressing uh, the project. And in addition to this, because we love uranium, you also have a uranium resource. Yeah, so we, we took the decision uh, probably 12, 18 months ago to um, start diversifying and building out a, a portfolio of growth opportunities. Um, and when we looked to do that, we looked at the skill set of the team and, and our team from a, from a geologist's point of view have got extensive uranium experience. Um, so we set out around building out a portfolio of early, early stage exploration projects in South Australia. Um, why did we do that? It's our backyard. Our our geologists know the know the um, know the ground well. And let's face it: if you make a discovery of a uranium discovery in Australia, you want it to be in a jurisdiction where you can actually take a discovery into production. There's only three uranium operating mines in Australia, and they're all located in South Australia. So it's a great jurisdiction to be uh, advancing uranium projects uh, in Australia. Something I love to ask our CEOs, uh, Travis, is, you know, I looked at your incredible background, young, professional, experience. you've got 20 years of mining already. What made you move into rare earths? Uh, it's a great question. So uh, prior to Australian Rare Earths, I was a company called Oz Minerals. Um, it was part of a acquisition that BHP made uh, some two and a half years ago. So that provided me an opportunity to take a step back and think about what I'd like to do next. Um, and I was very fortunate to come across this opportunity with Australian Rare Earths. And why I was attracted to, to this project is uh, the opportunity to take uh, a, a, a new project in my home state of South Australia and create something new um, for the local community, the, the local industry, uh, and bring a new, new mine into production. So that was something that really excited me. 
Um, Rarus was uh, obviously uh, a commodity in a, in, a, in a sector that I hadn't had any exposure to, but um, could certainly um, you know, understand the importance of the thematic you know, around the um, clean energy transition, the important part that Rare Earths will play uh, in that transition. Uh, so that was you know, certainly one of the uh, draw cards for uh, coming into a project like this. So what's next, Travis? Yeah, so we're really keen on delivering on, on our next um, you know, uh, key milestone. So you know, moving as fast as we can through the studies, um, working on um, you know, continuing to work with potential customers. Um, we have a non-binding MOU with Neo Performance Materials for half of uh, offtake of stage one of the, of the project, and they've been a great technical support um, you know, over the last three or four years um, as, we've, as, as we've worked through um, all, all of the test work in producing a mixed rarest carbonate, the product that we would sell and uh, to customers like NEO. So um, you know, we're going to continue to work closely with NEO. We've obviously got opportunities to work with other potential customers, so that's, that's certainly going to be a, a key for us. Um, and because of the nature of our deposit uh, being a, a, a reasonably enriched heavier earth um, assemblage, so we've got a, a, a one to seven heavy to light uh, rare earth ratio, um, and at a time where obviously the market is looking for a uh, new supply of heavy rare earths, um, we, we feel like there's a great opportunity to really leverage um, that opportunity with, with potential customers. And of course, for those of you out there that follow Neo Performance Materials, they're leaders in the industry. So for them to select you for a partner, can you tell us what made you so competitive? Yeah, it's a good question. So uh, it was before my time when they first um, they, they came in uh, as a shareholder at the IPO back in 2021. I think one of the, the things that they liked about the, the project was um, you know, the jurisdiction. Uh, Australia is a great mining jurisdiction. Uh, the assemblage of, of, the pro, of, the, uh, of the resource and the potential uh, scope for that resource to continue to grow and be a long-term sustainable supply of the, the light and heavy earths that are required to, to feed into for, as feedstock for, for their supply chain. So, um, you know, I think there's been great alignment around, um, you know, the, the management teams from, from both companies in, in how we can work together to advance a, a, a new project into the market. So for all the shareholders out there, I mean, you've been very clear about what should happen next, but what should we expect, say, in this next quarter? What do we get by Christmas? Yeah, so at the moment we're doing a, uh, a, some test work um, around the mixed rare earth carbonate um, impurity removal. Um, so we'll have some, um, hopefully, some encouraging results around the, the quality of the end product that we would look to produce. Uh, so that, that's something that we're working on with, with Ansto at the moment. Um, and then uh, you know, as we sort of look into the end of end of the year, we will obviously be um, working on releasing that pre-feasibility study, which we're really excited to, um, you know, come to a conclusion on that um, because we really like the approach that we're taking, um, the heap leach approach versus a tank leach, which a lot of the clay projects, as you know, um, are, are pursuing. What that means for us is it's going to be a significantly um, lower capital cost compared to you know the five or six hundred million dollars that some of these other projects are looking at. Ours is going to be orders of magnitude lower than that. And I think when the market understands a sovereign uh, jurisdiction like uh, Australia, tier one jurisdiction, a low capital cost project delivering heavies into the market in you know over the next few years. Um, it's, uh, it's going to be a great opportunity for the market to understand the, the strategic value in a project like Copper Murra. Um, so we're really excited to bring that, bring that to the market. And of course the audience undoubtedly heard partnering with Neo Performance Material and Ionic Clays in Australia. So for those of you interested, please go to the following website. Trevor, thank you for joining us today. Thanks very much. Appreciate it.